Thank you to Corsair and NVIDIA for sponsoring today's video. So Corsair sent over their Vengeance i7200 pre-built gaming desktop. And we're gonna take a closer look at it today. It's fully loaded with some pretty high-end hardware that you guys might find interesting. Here it is in this big old box. And they actually printed the specs right on the side of this box. It makes me really glad that they required a signature for delivery uh, because if a UPS driver like came to my house or something and actually knew what those specs meant, I would, I would never see this box. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've got a pretty nice lineup of hardware here. Inside we've got an Intel Core i7-11700. That's a non-case Q, so it's not going to be turboing to a, as high of a, a boost clock as, as the case Q would, and you can't overclock it and stuff. But that also means it's going to run quite a bit cooler, which if you guys have been following any of the news on the 11,000 series from Intel, uh, the high-end chips, they, they get really, really toasty, especially the case Qs and stuff. So that's not something you'll have to worry about as much here. Plus it's liquid cooled. Not exactly sure which exact cooler they put on here, but I'm guessing it's a 240 millimeter AIO. The GPU is an RTX 3070. Hell yeah. If this if this PC was like a Pokemon booster pack, that GPU would be like the Rainbow Rare Charizard VMAX. For sure, 100%. It's definitely the most sought after and hard to find component in this entire build. Not sure what board partner they're using, but we'll figure that out later. We've also got 16 gigs of Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 at 3200 speed, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive, probably gonna be like a Corsair MP600 or an MP600 core, which is a super fast drive. A Z490 motherboard, not sure what maker that is, and an IQ 4000D RGB tempered glass case, uh, along with a 750 watt power supply from Corsair that's 80 plus certified, and it comes preloaded with Windows 10. So we should probably open it now. All right, simple enough unboxing, went pretty smoothly. Uh, this is actually the first time that I've looked at the 4000D case up close and personal, and I really like the design. Obviously the front is completely open for, for tons of airflow, but just look at how easy this is. This is a push pin, push pin panel, pops off just like that, and then you've got your full removable dust filter I mean, it's the most seamless dust filter removal at the front panel that I think I've seen in a very long time. These fans are super quiet as well. They are RGB, of course, in true Corsair fashion. And this is probably one of the quieter pre-builts that I've unboxed in my time. It is so quiet, super, super quiet. Uh, nice job there, Corsair. But we've also got, look, there's our AIO. I forget exactly the model of this one, but it's 240 uh, radiator as I expected. And uh, just the RGB is going crazy. Of course, this is all configurable within the IQ software. You can disable it completely, but why would you? Why would you? Why wouldn't you wanna embrace that unicorn vomit? Get it all over you. Bathe in it, damn it. All right. Before that, this video was brought to you by cdkoffers.com a cool website I found for all of your game keys and software key needs. You can find keys for really cheap and they're reliable. And I just so happen to really need a Windows 10 Pro key for a system that I just built. Let me punch in my payment information really quick. Buy now. All right, here's my key. And this system's already activated, but we can just change the product key to the one we just bought. And if all goes smoothly, activate. It works, yay. So super legit, go ahead and follow the link in the description below guys and be sure to use the code BW20 for 20% off any of the keys or orders that you make at cdkoffers.com. Oh my goodness, sirens are going crazy over there. Anyway, MSI Z490A Pro, very nice board. It's a, it's more of a budget board, it doesn't have Wi-Fi or anything, but they did include a Wi-Fi module. There's a Wi-Fi card at the back so you can still connect the included antenna and get your Wi-Fi on if you want. And I'll remove that M.2 heatsink in a bit so we can get a closer look at that drive. But for our GPU, the RTX 3070, it's an FE. We got a Founders Edition, which IMO is the best kind. Uh, for the 3000 series, NVIDIA absolutely killed it. I love this design, it looks super nice and sexy, and it's also got pretty decent airflow passing it through that heat sink coming out the top right there and then it's being blown away further by the fans being exhausted out the top and the back they connected the gpu properly it's already better than the walmart pc one finger disconnected thank god ram's looking nice tubes are looking nice cable management hey hey oh my god why is my phone going insane i'm going to murder all my friends <laughs> Where was I? Cable management, yes, it looks really good. They did a fantastic job. Everything looks really nice and tidy on this side. What about the back? Let's take a look. <laughs> 
Actually, this is pretty good too. Nice uh, integrated fan controller on the back of the case. Some Velcro straps built into the chassis as well. Very nice. You've got uh, easy room for expansion if you want to add some two and a half inch drives here. There's your 750 power supply. It's an RM750 unit. Uh, very nice. Lots of ample space here too. If you wanted to add more accessories, devices, whatever the hell, there's a lot of extra room here for, for spare cables. Plus you've got that power supply basement where it's just easy to cram all the excess crap down there if you need. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I was going to remove that uh, that M.2 slot. Okay, let's see what you are. Oh, I stand corrected. It's not an MP600, it's an MP400. So it is PCIe Gen 3, but plenty fast still for the vast majority of users out there, especially if you're going to be using this for gaming and stuff like that. Uh, but we do get that one terabyte capacity, it looks like. Yes, yes, I see that right there. So cool, still NVMe speeds and stuff, just PCIe Gen 3. So yeah, with the CPU and GPU, we've got quite the gaming piece here. It's a, it's a pretty killer combo. Uh, a couple things to note about the GPU, the RTX 3070 here, you do, of course, get the full suite of NVIDIA RTX technologies, including ray tracing and DLSS. Ray tracing is becoming much more relevant these days as more and more games start to support it. And with DLSS, you can upscale the resolution of your games, make it look extra crispy without sacrificing much quality. In fact, the performance improves in a lot of instances, which is kind of like magic. But thanks, AI. Another more recent feature on the RTX cards is NVIDIA Reflex, which some of you guys may or may not be familiar with. It's basically a low latency esports technology that allows users to monitor and reduce latency in game. So if you're a competitive esports gamer, then obviously high FPS is super important, but so is responsiveness or latency. Uh, latency is kind of like the time it takes between a user input or action, like clicking a mouse, and when that action is actually displayed on screen in the form of pixels and stuff. Um, and there's a lot of like complicated hoops that uh, data has to jump through in that process. One of those hoops has to do with how the CPU and GPU hand off data to each other. So in a typical, you know, GPU intensive scene or title, uh, the CPU will actually load up a bunch of work into a queue so the GPU is constantly fed. It can send that data to your monitor. But even if you have a fast GPU and a fast CPU, there's still a bunch of data just sitting, waiting in queue, not doing anything, which is gonna increase your latency. So what NVIDIA Reflex does is it basically flips that process on its head. It removes the middleman completely, it removes the queue, and it syncs the CPU and GPU so that the CPU starts handing off data to the GPU in a more succinct fashion, right before it's ready to be rendered. And that way, it basically reduces your latency and improves your your aiming precision, your responsiveness, all that sort of thing, which uh, is fantastic if you're a competitive esports gamer. I say competitive because um, it's it's expensive. You know, you're gonna need a supported hardware as well. There's reflex supported displays from like Asus and Acer and stuff that are not cheap. So there is a barrier to entry there, which is why reflex right now in its infancy is not like a technology that everyone should go out and buy immediately or can buy immediately. But I'm hoping in time, it kind of follows the same suit as like RTX or ray tracing, I mean. But right now reflex is really reserved for those competitive esports gamers who are looking for the absolute best advantage. Uh, and in that case, it's nice that NVIDIA offers that to them. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that in order for Reflex to work, game developers actually need to modify the game engine. So there's a growing list right now of AAA titles that support Reflex for, for the optimal results, like Fortnite, Warzone, Apex Legends, uh, a lot of popular ones and stuff. So uh, that's, uh, that's Reflex for you. I say we uh, connect this thing to a display though and take it for a test spin. Before we continue, special thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. Let's be honest, today most people have smart TVs that they use to watch dumb content. If you're ready for something new that's educational and entertaining, CuriosityStream has thousands of streamable documentaries and non-fiction TV shows about science, technology, nature, travel, history, and more. Enjoy award-winning exclusives and originals, along with 35 collections of curated programs handpicked by experts. The platform also lets you stream to any device so you can watch anytime, anywhere. Click the link in the description and use code BITWIT to sign up for just $14.99 for a whole year. Check out all the quality content CuriosityStream has to offer and sign up today. All right, we've jumped into some Valorant, a lovely game, super fun. I've been playing this a lot on Twitch lately, um, but uh, you can see that we've got MSI Afterburner up as well right now, so we can monitor all the system thermals, clock speeds, memory utilization, that sort of thing. And right now I have the system uh, completely enclosed. All the side panels are on, front panels on. So it's pretty indicative of a real world experience how most gamers are gonna be using the system. Um, and I'm not giving it any sort of advantages when it comes to temperatures and that sort of thing. And right now we're actually 
actually performing pretty well. Like the CPU is only at around 34, let's say in the mid 30s, I'd say 35% uh, utilization and it's staying really cool in the mid 40s. So right now we're at like 46, 47 degrees Celsius, which is fantastic. Uh, it's really good. System memory, we have plenty of overhead there. We're only eating up about six and a half gigs of DDR4 and our frame rate is fantastic as well. We've got around 200 frames per second, sometimes going beyond that, you can see right there. And our GPU is also doing very good. <laughs> We're only at 71C right now, and that's at 96, 97%, practically full utilization at around 1920, anywhere between 1920 and 1940 megahertz. The core clock speed's kind of fluctuating between that range. Um, so very nice temperatures, but the fun fact that uh, I, will, I will share with you guys right now is that I'm actually running Unigen Heaven 4.0 in the background simultaneously. So this whole time, both apps have been running Full throttle. See, I pulled a sneaky on you. And if you guys know anything about Unigen Heaven 4.0, it's very demanding on the GPU. And still, with both of those games running, we're only getting, again, 71, 72 C. So we still have tons of thermal headroom. It's fantastic. Not only is the GPU just uh, really well poised to, to deliver good cooling, but the case, the 4000D is just an animal when it comes to thermals. Um, airflow is flowing through this thing like no one's business. And honestly, it's it sounds just as quiet as it did when it was idling. I'm sure it's a little bit louder. I haven't done any scientific testing, of course, but it is super quiet. And the fact that there is one, two, three, four, five, six fans, six fans, those are just the case fans, it doesn't include the power supply or the GPU. It is whisper quiet, absolutely whisper quiet. Again, we're running a game and a GPU stress test right now. So that's pretty impressive. Now bear in mind, again, we're, we're getting around what, 200 FPS? Let's go ahead and close out Unigen Heaven, jump back into Valorant, and this should go up significantly now that we can allocate all the resources back to Valorant. And here we are, getting roughly 400 frames per second, and I died again. I don't look any cooler dying at 400 FPS, but it is a very smooth way to die. Uh, and you can see our GPU temperature actually dropped down. We're getting around 64C now, and our core clock speed went up at 2,025 megahertz because we have a bit more thermal headroom. The, uh, the GPU boost technology is able to, to ramp up our clock speed a bit further. And look at how much lower our GPU utilization is at now. 45 to 50%, got plenty of overhead there as well. CPU temperatures are more or less the same, still hovering in the mid 40s uh, because Unigen Heaven has virtually no impact on CPU. I just wanted to throw that up there just to see exactly what the system can handle. And sure enough, it's taking it like a champ. We are in competitive esports territory. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. But uh, the, the gameplay experience is, is fantastic right now. And uh, we're still eating up oh, only around six gigs of system memory, so not too shabby there either. But overall, the system's very fluid. It's staying very quiet and very cool, which I, I think is like, that's like the trifecta. You know, performance, cooling, and acoustics, that's the most that you could hope for for a high-end gaming system like this. And the Vengeance i7200 is delivering on all those fronts beautifully. So this was just a quick little demo. Um, I don't think I need to go much further to let you guys know and show and demonstrate that it works. It just works. Uh, I, I actually reached out to Corsair about availability and pricing with these systems, just given the fact that they're using really uh, ex elusive RTX GPUs. And the word that I got back from them was RTX 3070 supply is actually relatively decent. Don't. Don't what? It's the RTX 3080s that are really hard to come by these days, even for guys like Corsair. I mean, everyone's kind of being affected by the shortage and ridiculous demand uh, all the same, whether you're a consumer, an SI, manufacturer like Corsair. So they're kind of taking it on a week by week basis. They don't really know exactly how much stock that they're get, gonna get in from one particular week to the next, but um, they're trying to make the availabil availability and pricing consistent for consumers. So you're not gonna see any super inflated prices on Corsair's website. Obviously, you can't say the same thing if uh, if these systems are being sold by like third-party sellers on various e-tailers. But if you're buying it straight from Corsair, they're trying to keep the pricing very consistent so that all the parts that you're getting are more or less MSRP. And as far as they know right now, I also asked them about this. They haven't experienced any kind of bot purchasing, which is fantastic. That means if they have these GPUs in stock and they're able to supply them for these builds, then you'll be able to buy them without having to compete with an army of bots, which is, which, which is a huge leg up. And also the fact that you can just buy them online instead of having to wait in line at a micro Micro Center, for example, for three hours or whatever, or more like three days, honestly, uh, is, is definitely something to consider if you're looking to buy a full-blown PC. So altogether, a really nice system. I'm, I'm happy with the way that they put this together. Cable management is on point. The hardware is fantastic, and it's just performing 
really, really nicely. If you guys have any comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to relay any constructive criticism you have for this build to Corsair and uh, NVIDIA potentially as well. Uh, but without further ado, thank you for watching this video. Toss a like on it before you go. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.